Kieran McGuire here from Box and Bands Ireland, and uh, I'm very happy to, here to be joined with uh, another loud man. But uh, the loud man isn't uh, in Ireland at the moment or in loud. Um, I'm here with uh, the Irish Matrix Conal trainer. Um, yep. Conal, um, first of all, I, first of all, I really appreciate you coming on because I know you're in the middle of working at the moment, so I really appreciate yeah, no, you. All good, all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Conal, I was just looking over your story, and there's not like there's not massive amount of 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 uh information on you because like it seems like you moved over to Canada pretty much when you turned eighteen and um yeah pretty much which means that you wouldn't have as fought as a senior as of yeah uh, in Ireland is that right um yeah so first of all like what what made you first of all move over to Canada. Oh. School. I was always like I always had to do something I couldn't be just contained so like I went to college for a bit and I didn't like it so I was like right what else can I do here my mom was like I don't fucking try find a job here or even try go to Canada work with your dad because my dad was here mm. so came over here to work with him also try half my boxing progress a bit more because like right next door to the states so you know like you get sparring with some American lads Maybe even some South Americans, which I have gotten, and it's been fucking horrendous. Not fucking terrible, fucking tremendous. <laughs> um, so it's been, been all good. So you were a member of uh, the Dalgan Box Club in Dundalk. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, a lot of very good boxes came out of there. Like, um, you've the the Broadhurst for Amy, um, Paul, yeah, <laughs> Stephen, all of them, and then uh, <clears throat> and then obviously Tony as coach, and then you have. Like people like your own age, close to your age, like Lee Mackin and that, um, other people exactly, who yeah. competed with it's you. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in that club would have would have been people that would have competed for elites and things like that uh, as well. So oh what, yeah. What, yeah. what made you turn pro over in <laughs> Canada so early? Because you you know a lot of people could have said, yeah. uh, oh, look, he could have had another ten years as as an amateur. But what what made you do? That's not really my dream. Like, everyone has this, like, amateur thing. Like, yeah, amateur is good and all. Like, it's good to have that Olympic dream. But I don't really, like, I'll see, like, okay, I can win an Olympics. But where will I progress after that? I'd rather get in early now as a profession. Like, take the hard hits. Like, I'm, I'm fighting Mexicans and shit now, just building my record. But I'm getting tough fights. Like, so I might as well get in now, get used to the eight ounces, like, all oh, these fellas down there are going to be in 10 ounce gloves taking hits off fucking mitts while well, I'll be getting pretty much harder hits. So, mm-hmm. as soon as they step in with me, they're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whose idea uh, was it for you to turn pro? Oh, it's always been mine. Like, since I was 17, like I said, I said to my coach back home, he was like, I was like, listen, I really want to turn pro. Like, this is when COVID was on. Like, there was no amateur fights. So, we were always, like, we were always getting told, like, yeah tournaments coming back this and that and the game cancelled so I was like fuck this man can I just go pro <laughs> and he was like um, no I just give it time so who who is it that turns you pro over now uh, my coach over here now his name is John Mendoza he's a fucking amazing coach he's been added 20 to 30 years he's a few world champions himself actually there's one um, where he's got now her name's Vanessa Bradford he's mm-hmm. a really good fighter she's a really mm-hmm. good fighter she won the W. IBO, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Not too long ago. Yeah, that was that was a good fight. Mm. Um and so he he's managing and coaching you. Yeah, uh yeah, he's managing and coaching me, yeah. Yeah. Um so uh, how long were you over there till you had your first uh, professional fight? Because I know you had your first fight in March this year, if I'm right. Yeah, I was I'm over here now about a year and a half. Uh, I was amateur last year as well, like just to feel out like the Canadian lads, see how they do and Honestly, it was a lot harder back home, so I was like, fuck it. <laughs> Still from now. I must ask, uh, was it a bit of a shock for you for the pro game when you realise how much, at the start, you're the person that has to do a lot of the groundwork, like selling tickets, paying for your opponent? Oh, yeah, like it is hard. Like, but... Was that a bit of a shock at the start? It wasn't really a shock, like, yeah, I've always been told how I've I I grew up a box and I've been doing this my whole life. I know how this game is inside and out. Like, mm-hmm. so I can, if I I don't I was either gonna make it hard, I would make it hard. If I was gonna make it easy, I'll make it easy. So I guess I have to make it hard. <laughs> 
Um, second fight was only last month, and you got a stoppage. Um, yeah. can you just tell me about your fight? It was a good fight, yeah. I learned a lot from my first one. I came in more calmly, you know, just feeling them out. I worked my job a lot. Mm. As far as about 30 seconds in, I cracked him with a right to the body or the left to the body, I can't remember which one, and I seen that hurt him. So then the first, that whole round, he just, you know, kept going to the head and switching to the body, just breaking him down. Mm-hmm. And in the second, I could just tell he was done, like, and just kept working, kept doing what I was doing, you know, worked the body. And then there was a wee bridge on his nose that I kind of noticed. So I was like, right, we'll see what happens here. I cracked him. Then that just, that opened him up completely. Then just blood coming down. The doctors had to come in and stop it. <laughs> um, uh, are you planning to get out again this year? Oh, yeah. We want to have another fight. I'm hopefully fighting again in two weeks or three weeks in Toronto. And then after that, another one in November, start of November or end of October. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting the Good ideal fight. start, uh, as many voices as you can back to back. Um, yeah. since you've left, uh, in, in particular in uh, Southern Ireland, um, it seems that the the professional game is really set to pick up again with shows, and the yeah. domestic scene in particular has gotten very tasty. And like you've Eric Donovan who just retired, uh, and he was the featherweight Irish champion, um. Is the domestic scene at home something that would interest you if you were if you were offered the right fight at the right time to fight for an Irish title or a title? Was that something you'd entertain? Um, a hundred percent. Like I'd have to talk to me man, obviously about that. But for a fight in Ireland, that is the big highlight I would want in my career. Mm. No matter like how big it is, at some point I would like to fight in three arena, just like how Katie Ted and all them just mm. recently done. Like I want, I want to put something big on like that. Because mm. we, we, boxing isn't really that big in Ireland. Like when you really look at it, like with no support whatsoever. Like and we have so mm. many great fighters. Yeah, yeah. Just however, like that's really what I want to bring most of more than and, like bring a big crowd, bring all these people. Like so, what Irish people can really do, like how we can really fight. Mm. Yeah. Um. The show. One of the shows was that recently. Uh, Colin Murphy fought. Um. Uh, Liam Gaynor for the Irish title at Super Featherweight and um, that was a, a headliner um, in Belfast like yeah. if it was something like that if it was something along those lines where you just came home for two weeks and you fought for one of those belts and, and went back out to Canada with an Irish title and you'd have a European ranking as well it, like yeah. would that be something you'd like to pick up seeing as, as a senior you, you didn't get to compete in, the, compete in the elites as a senior would that be something that you'd like to take off like Probably, yeah, like, because that, that, cause then really that would be just showing, like, I am I'm best in Ireland, like, <laughs> why wouldn't I want to do that? Mm-hmm. So, what's your plan? Like, you're only 19, so I imagine, like, your your coach is in no way rushing you. So, is it just, yeah, just is it just, is it just take one fight at a time? He's, he's, he's been at this game a long time. He knows how to do it rightly, so he wants us to start off slow, you know, few hand-picked fights, like, it's how pro boxing goes, you know, and then as I get better, like, I'm doing really well now, like, just for now, I'm just getting, like, feeling, getting used to the punches, getting used to being in, like, a pro scene from transition to amateur now, he wants me to do so. Mm-hmm. But within the next, like, sometime next year, more than likely, he wants to fight me for a Canadian title. So that should mm-hmm. be good, and then hopefully after that, then maybe I come back or have the Irish title. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've one more question for you. The Irish yeah, Matrix. Right. H- how did that come about? Ah, uh, because I mean, the first time we actually had nicknames is funny. It was way back in I was younger. I was like fourteen, fifteen, and I was like, I was, my nickname was the Trickster. I was I was assigned between the Trickster or the Cannibal, and I chose the Cannibal. And then I told I was telling my sto- that story to my coach and everybody here. And then one of the lads was like, the trickster, okay. Then he seemed like, because I like, I'll dodge, I like moving, like moving my head, like I won't stay, like stance and all that shit. Like I like making me miss. So then he was like, oh. like I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he didn't even need fucking nickname. So I was just, he was just throwing <laughs> out there. I was like, I think that's a good fucking nickname, actually. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it is like, especially with the current generation with TikTok, uh, with your clips. If you get for, if you keep putting out those good clips, like I tell you, it gains, it gains a lot of traction. Like, um. So yeah, yeah no, it, I think, I think it's very, very clever. Um, Connell, I really appreciate your time. I know you probably have to get back to work. It's actually seven o'clock at night here, so I'm gonna have my dinner and yeah. probably go to bed. But you, you have, you have the rest yeah, of the day to work. Like, so I really appreciate yeah. you doing it. And I imagine it's, it's hot over there. Like, so yeah, thanks very much. Uh, some demon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Thanks very much, uh, Connell. Yeah, thanks.